Hello gang, welcome back, if you're just joining me. Uh, so far, what we've been doing, this is a 190cc short case uh, build that I've been doing for a buddy, RCQ. This is a Tata engine, it's got a 63 millimeter piston, uh, plus 3 millimeter crankshaft, large ports, big valve, this is a real deal. B block 57 millimeter stud spacing. This is a real deal, deal, folks. And if you're tuning in right now, maybe it's because you wanted to watch a video on how to adjust the valves. If you're wanting to watch that, you may want to skip ahead a little bit because at this point, where we, uh, where we are in the video, is I'm installing a Tata T100 camshaft. Okay. From here, we'll go on and install the cam crate or the rocker cradle and adjust the valves and all that. So, we got to get this cam uh, installed. Now, is what I'd like to point out take note, you've got one little hole, another little, little hole, and a big hole. Now, when you install this, Actually, let me take the camera off the tripod mount for a second. Over here, actually, right here, <clears throat> man, I, I'm having a hard time getting in there. Okay, now you can see it. Can you see that T and the F? All right. That T and the F, this line right here in your case that I'm touching, that will point directly to the line under the T. See that? They're like directly lined up. That means you are at top dead center. So, it's important that you have that set to uh, top dead center over there when you install this cam. Now, Here's how you do it. Alright. Now. See this that I'm touching? The surface of the head? See that line in between them two circles? You're going to make sure that line runs parallel with the cylinder head. And your other, the big dot, is all the way up at top. This is pretty hard to do with the camera right now. But it's going to be something like that, right there. It's not wanting to focus. Uh, come on, focus, focus, focus. So it'll be like that when you have the chain over it. That means it's in time and at top dead center. Alright, now this is going to be hard to do without getting in the way of the camera. Remember what I said, you keep your big dot up at the top. So... You're going to dip your camshaft down a little bit. Ah. Ah. Come on. Okay. There we go. Now dip it down a little bit to feed it over that. Boom. Just like that. So that's how you do it. You dip it down. Make sure you're in your... Uh, chain guides which I am okay now let's get that rocker crater that crater <laughs> rocker cradle mounted all right next step up before you put your cradle in put your dowels in they go crisscross like so this one and this one ah. All right, now, when you do this, take note, you got an EX. Sometimes they'll have an IN and an EX. Sometimes it's just an arrow, but the EX means exhaust. Also, take note, these tappets, I always back them all the way up, so I don't have any issues there's been a couple times where I went to mount them and they were all the way down and I had to back them back out. But anyways, back your tappets out and uh, pay attention to the E and X. 
and go ahead and mount See what I did here? Not paying attention. Oh my. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> That's a general rule of thumb that I go by. You know, if something's not going right and you're having to force it, Chances are something's wrong. Is what I did was this thing was uh, my rocker arm was flipped down and went down behind the cam, so I had to back it out or pull it off and put it on there. So, anyways, all right. So let's go ahead and get these mounted. You got four washers. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, what is going on with this? And this washer has got some stupid permatex or something i don't know what it is but i have to clean that out real quick i'll be right back all right now we can continue on take these things off i was just gonna put on some uh new ones but I don't appear to have the right size on stock for those. Ah, holy crap. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I need a little bit of Loctite. Okay, now I did have new nuts I had to grab. These things, they're all filled with grease and I don't know. They weren't going on there good. I just simply do not have time to clean these things. So, we'll just go with brand new ones. How's that work? See how easy those go on there? Boom, boom, boom. Alright. So, let's go ahead and tighten her on down. I won't make you guys watch that. Alright. So adjusting the valves is easy. It's what I like to do is get a little oil. My oil can's broke right now, so I'm just using a little bit of Mobile One 10W40. Put some oil in here. Poop, poop, poop. That's it. Just I got a napkin down on the floor, so if it drips on the floor, that's quite all right. But is what you're doing is you're gonna want your uh, gap tool. Uh, uh, your feeler gauge <laughs> gap tool you're going to want your uh, feeler gauge to be able to slide in between there pretty easy so that's what we're doing right here is just getting a little bit of oil plus I'm putting a little oil on this uh, cam up here let's get it nice and oily alright beautiful oh I just dropped that in there okay so Now, when you adjust these, this right here is your tappet. This nut locks your, the thing with the square tip on it that I'm touching my fingertip to. That is your tappet. Sorry about that. Got distracted. Had a visitor come out to the shop. So, is what you're going to be doing is you're going to be adjusting the gap in between. Oh, yeah. I was explaining this thing right here, that's your tappet. This nut is going to lock it in place. Now, rule of thumb. Intake is always going to be larger. The gap is always going to be a bigger gap than the exhaust gap. Now, what I'm going to set this to is 5 and 7. So, how you do that is you get your gauge. Okay, I'm going to start with... But, pay attention. It's... 0 0.05, 0 
zero five millimeters not point zero zero five that would be in inches going with millimeter you need point zero five so an intake this is how you do it you put your feeler gauge in there and you just tighten her on down until that starts to get taut Okay, that's a little too tight. And that's a little loose. Alright, that was the three. I always start out with my smaller one. Alright, this is 0.5. See how that's bending and won't go in there? Alright, there we go. All right, that's what you're looking for. You want it to be able to slide in, hear it, and it pulls on it a little bit. Now go ahead and tighten this down. Now, what I got for this, this handy little tool. I don't quite remember the name of it, but it's got a square in the end of it right here. That goes on your square end, and it goes through here. This is, uh, what size is that? Nine millimeter. So, is what you do. Get it kind of hand tight. You put that on there. And there you go. You drop that on your square. And then, ah, uh, tighten it down. Uh, okay, I didn't have that nearly as tight as I thought I did. I was sitting there trying to do it and I couldn't get it. Huh, that's eight millimeter. This is part of a set. It comes with eight, nine, and ten millimeter to fit on that. And it's got different tap it tools. Like this one has got a slot in it. So, but anyways, back to what I was doing. There we go. Now it fits. Alright. Now before you tighten it down, do a double check. Beautiful. Now, you're going to hold this dial while you crank that tight. Crank her on down. And then, double check. Beautiful. And the next one up is bending. Alright, perfect. So we got that set. I don't I, I don't know if you can see on there. Yeah, it's showing up. See how that's 0 0.05? You do not want 0 0.002 or 0 0.005 and because that's metric. You want to use a uh, millimeter. Remember what I said. Always go a little bit larger on your uh, exhaust. So if you're going with three on your exhaust, four on or if you're going with three on your intake, four on the exhaust. Five on the uh, intake, maybe you want to go seven on your exhaust. It's that kind of thing. So, we got that set. I'm not going to make you watch the exhaust. you already seen how to do it. So, the exhaust is the exact same process. So, I'll be back once uh, I had the valves uh, gapped. Alright, so I got them both adjusted. That's the five. See, there's a five. I can't get the six in there. Same thing down here. 
There you go. There's a six. So, that's how you adjust your uh, valves right there. It's a relatively simple process. Last step here is uh, got to... Uh, got to uh excuse me sorry i'm getting distracted just double check all my everything make sure everything's lined up like it's supposed to be uh let's get some light on it see see that line right there how it's horizontal with this the one in my camshaft and this one so that's how you do the timing on a gy6 so, last step I got to do right here is put the valve cover on. That's pretty self-explanatory. So, if you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, or, you know, I didn't explain anything right, hit me up at my forum. That's dansgaragetalk.com. Again, that's dansgaragetalk.com. This is a Tata 190cc. Very, very nice motor. Oil port oil cooled it, this thing's just awesome if you need to buy any merchandise if you're wanting to build your own hit me up at my store shop.martinmopeds.com thanks for watching this is dmartin95 and i'm out